Good morning, everyone. Boker Tov. This month is the month of Adar when we celebrate Purim next Saturday night. We'll read the Megillah. And then on Sunday at the synagogue at 4 o'clock, we're going to have a big celebration with Dudu Fisher performing all the way from Israel. And we all know that when there's two Adars like this year, we celebrate Purim in the second Adar. And the rabbis say because we want to celebrate the two joyous holidays of Purim and Passover back to back, side by side. So therefore we do it in the second Purim, which is closer to the holiday of Passover. But the question is, you would think it's just the opposite. We have two major holidays, let's space them out. Why put them in close proximity? Why not distance it a little bit so we could spread the joy over a greater period of time? And the answer I believe is that when you look at the two holidays of Purim and Passover, on the surface there can't be more of a contrast between two holidays than Purim and Passover because they're extreme opposites. Passover is about divine intervention, ten plagues, open, revealed, supernatural miracles and events like the splitting of the sea. The hand of God was shown to not just Pharaoh and Egypt but to the Jewish people in the most revealed way. On the other hand, the story of Purim is the opposite. Think about what happens. King Ahasuerus kills his wife, Vashti, and then he's looking for a new queen. And the most beautiful girl that happens to be chosen is Esther. And imagine the Jews in the shul the next day, they're talking about the news that they read, that King Ahasuerus chose a Jewish girl as his wife. And they're thinking, well, what does this have to do with us? And then, of course, the story goes on and two of the king's servants are plotting to poison the king and Mordechai overhears it and reports it to the king. And once again, what does that have to do with the Jewish people? And then he can't sleep one night and he reads how he never rewarded Mordechai and he tells Haman to parade Mordechai through the streets. And again, what does this have to do with the Jewish people? But then when Haman comes with his genocidal plan to wipe out the Jewish people, suddenly the Jewish people look back and they realize that all of these events were not coincidences, but God was manipulating nature to bring about the salvation, the deliverance and the miraculous salvation and redemption of the Jewish people. And therefore the story of Purim is where God is not overtly seen and recognized and visible but rather God is working through nature. And therefore the two holidays side by side teach us that sometimes we see God's hand like the splitting of the sea in a very revealed way in our life. Clearly this is from God. But sometimes God works, so to speak, anonymously. God works behind the veil. And the miracle of Purim is our recognition that all along God was performing miracles for us we just didn't realize it and recognize it. And therefore Purim reminds us that God is with us all the time, constantly, even when we can't see His hand. And He is always working for the salvation and the redemption of the Jewish people. And therefore Purim teaches us that we could be joyous each and every day, not only when we feel God's closeness, but even when it's not as present and revealed. There's a story told about the sun and the wind we're having a debate, who's stronger? And so they decided to put it to a test. So they saw a farmer in the field, working his field, and he's wearing a jacket. And they said, okay, whoever could get the farmer to take his jacket off is the winner, is the one who is stronger. And so the wind goes first, he starts blowing the wind five miles an hour, 10 miles, 15, 20, and the more the wind blows, the farmer is trying to get his jacket off him but the farmer just holds on to his jacket tighter and tighter as the wind gets stronger and stronger and clutching his jacket with all of his strength. And finally the wind gives up and he says, okay, I'll let you go. And the sun goes and starts shining its light. And it goes 70 degrees and 80 degrees and 90 degrees. And by the time it hits 100 degrees, the farmer schwitzing, he just takes his jacket off and tosses it off to the side. And the metaphor is that when the winds of persecution, oppression, anti-Semitism blew. The Jews clutched their Torah, their mitzvahs, their Jewish garb and held on more tightly and dearly. But unfortunately when the sun of uh, freedom and prosperity 
and acceptance shined on the Jewish people many times the Jews assimilated and willingly just took off their Jewish garb and tossed it to the side. And this is the story of Purim. It says that at the time of the story of Purim, the Jewish people re-accepted the Torah that they received at Mount Sinai after the exodus from Egypt. But after exodus from Egypt, they accepted it against their will. But now they willfully, joyfully re-accepted it upon themselves out of love because they saw the hand of God working behind the scenes. And so too in our day and age today, after October 7th, we're seeing a return to Judaism. People are holding on to their Jewishness as a cloak, of an, as an armor of protection and comfort and strength more than ever before. We are living through the days of Purim, where once again there's a genocidal plan by our enemies. But like the story of Purim, God is working behind the scenes and we will see great miracles and deliverance. Have a wonderful day.